Hey guys, Carbelch here. This is going to be my beginning of the year 2020 everyday carry system update. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, you can see some things haven't changed, a few things have, a few things have gone away, a few things have come back. But this is going to be the first part of a three part series. The first part is going to be my on body everyday carry system. This is what's in my pockets, on my belt every day. The next part is going to be my everyday carry bag, which goes with me everywhere. Um, you know, stays in my vehicle if I go into a store or something like that, but it's usually within arm's reach wherever I go. And the third and final part will be my vehicle everyday carry system. All right, so let's get started with a couple things uh, that are missing here that are part of my system. First thing is, of course, a cell phone. Um, I'm currently carrying a Galaxy Note 9. Uh, that's actually what's filming the video right now. The other thing is going to be my uh, Samsung Galaxy smartwatch, which we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'm not going to show you too much on there because it has quite a bit of personal stuff like a cell phone would, but uh, that's my current everyday carry watch. Um, one thing I want to talk about too, um, as you can see my silicone wedding band. Uh, I do a lot of work with metal work, machines, stuff like that, so you know I don't want to accidentally lose a finger and this will break before. Uh, your finger comes off. So just a little minor note. So let's go ahead and get started here with my keys. Um, the keys are a little simpler system than they used to be, and I'm actually considering adding some stuff back to it, but I am liking how light they are right now. I have these little connectors, so they come into, you know, it comes apart into different pieces. You know, these are for my truck, obviously. Um, you know, a truck has a toolbox and then a gun lockbox, so that's those. So I can, you know, separate those off if I need to, you know, leave the truck running and go grab something from the house, the mailbox or whatever. Next part here is going to be just my, uh, if I get loose here, here's just like my around the house keys, you know, house keys, stuff like that. And then the last part here is the tool section. Um, this is a Rovivon, I believe it's the, yep, A5, luminous body. Uh, this one has a micro USB charging port. You see it's kind of chewed up. I have a little trouble getting that uh, charger cover in and out, a little frustrating. But on that, it's a great light. The body's glow in the dark, so it makes it easier to find your keys if you drop them in the dark. This thing's uh, 550 lumens, so it's super bright. And it also has uh, white and red side lights, which is pretty cool. Um, so excellent little keychain light. I find it doesn't come on in my pocket like a lot of my other lights used to, and it seems to hold a charge really well. So excellent little light. The other thing on here is going to be some Uncle Bill's sliver grippers. Turn them over here. These are just really good little tweezers. Um, you know, nice if you get slivers um, or if you need to use some delicate work. So those are, I keep taking them off and then end up putting them back on because I miss them. So I guess they're just gonna have to stay. And last but not least here, um, if you don't recognize that, that's because it's the only one that exists. <laughs> this is a custom-made uh, titanium keychain pry bar. Uh, it's actually made by me for my keys. I have a couple different styles um, that I make, but I hadn't quite found what I wanted in a keychain tool, which was nice and thick and heavy-duty and simple. Uh, I don't really like all the wrenches and cutouts on there to get hung up on stuff and get your keys stuck in. So I just wanted something simple and strong, but because it's titanium, it's incredibly lightweight. Um, so yeah, this is a custom titanium keychain tool. If you guys are interested, I will show you on how I make them and a couple of other styles. Um, make this style. And this is kind of my original one here, which some of you may have seen on my keychain pictures in the past. Sorry about my dry hands. Uh, they're a little torn up right now, so don't, don't try to read too much into that. But these are all, this is also another style of keychain that I make. All right, so go ahead and put that all back together like I normally carry it. And we'll talk about the wallet real quick. This is one thing that I've carried before, and I've carried different wallets, so I've come back around to it. Um, I've taken all the personal identifiable stuff in there. Normally I have like my photo ID and stuff in there, which is kind of nice because it's accessible from the outside. But I'm sure most of you know, this is Spec Ops, the Wallet Junior. It's kind of nice because it has this uh, tuck closure instead of Velcro or anything like that. Uh, made in America, super durable. I mean, this thing's probably 10 years old and it's shown a little wear, but 
Uh, it's an excellent wallet. The only thing is it's really large. Um, it's a pain to set on, uh, to carry in my back pocket just because my front pockets are usually full of my cell phone and my keys. So, you know, front pockets respectively, I don't carry those together. I carry one keys in one pocket and then my cell phone in the other. So I don't really like to add anything else cause that's quite a bit of bulk already. Um, <clears throat> this wallet has some excellent storage, which is really nice. Um, you know, I, have my CDL, so usually I keep my med card in here, and it's got this little zippered pocket, and in my case, just for the fun of it, um, and check the legality in your states before you decide to do something like this, here are some luck picks. So these are tension wrenches, um, and then this is the mace picks from Sparrows, and then also in here, I have the Mace 3 expansion, which has a handcuff shim, a feeler slash shove it kind of tool and then an auto jiggler and then these are the ITS tactical um, quick stick and easy decoder I took out of my uh, wallet from them the sear kit in the wallet um, so do I use these all the time no absolutely not do I need to have them no definitely not um, do I enjoy having them yeah that's the only reason they're in there is because I enjoy having it and uh, I like picking locks as a hobby, so, you know, a lot of times if I'm, you know, going to be waiting somewhere or especially if I'm sitting in my vehicle waiting somewhere, um, I'll have a couple paddle locks and I'll just play with them, practice picking them, stuff like that. So those are tucked away in there, which is one thing that's really nice about this wall is it does give you the ability to tuck them away safely. One thing I don't like besides the side is this ID cover. It seems to be a little hard on the cards. Um... I would show you, but my identity cards are in there, so I'm not going to, but believe me, it does tear up your ID cards a little bit. So, you know, I'm considering something like a Travax um, wallet or a Das Ophemir, at least how you pronounce it, like their gun deck, or maybe even a Craft and Lore port. Uh, I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to carry everything I need to. I may have to drop the lock picks out, which is okay, because as you'll see later, I do carry some more in my EDC bag, so I may not need to have them in my wallet. As you can see, I actually don't really have that much in there. Um, just a few cards, you know, and then I don't even have any cash right now. I'm not much of a cash carrier. I try to keep some in there, but it got spent and I haven't replenished it yet. Definitely going to be considering downsizing to a different wallet. This one just doesn't fit in pants very well. And it's not comfortable to set on. I find myself on long car trips, you know, pulling out of my pocket and setting up on the dash. And I just don't like doing that. So something needs to change, but this is a great wallet. It does work for now. Next thing, this is today's knife carry, Spyderco Paramilitary 3. Honestly, I find this thing in my pocket more often than pretty much any other knife. Flicks open, close real easily. You can actually flick it open one-handed and close it one-handed. Um, you know, I'm out of Colorado, so these guys being based in Colorado is really cool. This one's made in golden. Um, excellent knife, S30V, of course, G10 scales. Fairly lightweight. It's a little bit big in my pocket. It's my only real complaint about it. Um, some people don't like the spider holes. I have no problem with them. I find it easy to open. I do carry some others sometimes, but this has been kind of my go-to for quite a while here. Next thing is, this is a pretty recent addition. Um, it's a little bit big for an EDC light, but it's really nice to have the power and the runtime. This is the Phoenix PD36R. Um, this is one of their brand new lights. Um, this is a 21700 cell instead of an 18650. Now, if you guys saw my Olight video, you may be going, well, you talked about how much you like having 18650s. Why do you have a 21700 light? Well, you know, honestly, 21700s may be the way forward. Um, from my understanding, and I may be incorrect, uh, that's the cell that Tesla uses. So there's a lot of, you know, development and research going into the cells, and their capacity is really good. This is... Uh, I think this one's 5,000 milliamp hour, which is just the stock um, Phoenix one that comes with it. So it has excellent runtime. It's actually, this section here is slightly thicker, but the end caps and everything are the same size as an 18650 light. So you get in basically the same form factor, pretty much double the runtime almost. So it's pretty nice. The other thing that really attracted me to this light uh, it's two things. First of all, it's USB-C charging, which is excellent. I really am not a huge fan of micro USB. I would like it if it went away and everything could go to USB-C. I'd be extremely happy. 
So that fits in better with my charging system. It's also faster charging, which is really nice. Um, the other thing that I like about this is this is a luminous SST40 LED, excuse me, my tongue tangulated there. Um, it's a little cool white probably for some people, but uh, it's 1600 lumens and has excellent throw, pretty close to 300 meters. And throw is something I really appreciate in an EDC light, especially one that doesn't have a huge bezel on it like this one. So overall, it's a great light. It's probably too much for most people to carry as an EDC option, but I've really been enjoying it. So that's my current EDC light. The Notorious Leatherman Sheath, and you can see this one's beat up. I have to replace these sheaths quite often because they get chewed up. But they're fairly inexpensive. I wish they were a little bit better quality. And I know that Leatherman has the new premium series leather ones. My problem with them is they don't have these side pockets. And see, I use these side pockets a lot. Um, and this one I have a Fisher Space Pen. So it's nice to just always have a good quality pen. Um, the only reason I went with the Fisher is just because it fits in the sheath really nice. And then this is actually one of my favorite all-time EDC lights. Um, it only has one mode. It's AAA powered, but you know, 30 lumens doesn't seem like much, but it's actually great for EDC. It's not super blinding, but it's enough light for pretty much all the basic needs. It also has a little two-way pocket clip, so this makes an excellent headlamp. Um, and it just always works, and it's always comes on at the light level you expect. You don't have a whole bunch of modes, anything like that. So excellent little EDC light and the cool thing about it too is it fits right here in the sheath so even if I only grabbed my Leatherman and stuck it on my belt I have a pretty decent setup because Leatherman's got a knife of course it's got other tools I've got my pen and I've got a flashlight which you know a knife and a flashlight are like required in my opinion for you to be prepared for even the most basic of daily things that could happen so it's one of the reasons I like this is a nice compact system of course, still rocking the Leatherman Charge TTI. This is the newest version, of course, that has the 420HC cutters, which is great. I uh, love it. The only downside to this one for me, of course, price is a little high on them. Second of all, it's almost too nice. I don't find myself using it as much as maybe I would if it was a little less expensive blade or tool. So that's something that you may consider is... You know, this one's almost too high value for me. I I don't beat it up. Like when I used to have Leatherman Wave, I'd use it for absolutely everything. I wasn't hes wouldn't hesitate to use it when I needed to. This one I think twice if I really want to beat it up doing that with it. So that is a downside for me. I also have a Leatherman Bit Set. Now this is actually hand-picked uh, bits. A little dirty from being in my pocket. Or being on my belt, excuse me. Um, but these have... A couple of torques and stuff like that so I can do knife maintenance but I went and picked the what I thought was the most functional bits out of one of their little two-piece bit sets and stuck it in there all right last but not least and this is hot because I am carrying it and it's only you the camera and me here so it's safe for me to handle it this is my performance center shield um, nine millimeter of course wearing a TLR6 uh, I'm not huge fan of lasers but i really love having a weapon light and it's basically the same size they don't really make one to my knowledge it's this size it's just a light but weapon lights are really nice to have um, this one has ported barrels and has the fiber optic sights from the factory you'd be amazed the difference the ported barrel makes in this small of a gun the recoil on this is like almost unnoticeable it's pretty amazing um excellent little gun i love it carrying some good horny Critical Duty, hollow points in it. And I was, of course, throwing an extra mag. Uh, this one has the extended one extra round, so it's got the little pinky extension on there, which is nice, but it's a little more concealable without. So um, excellent gun. Uh, it's very thin profile, and because it's rounded shape, it's really easy to conceal. It just disappears in the waistband, which is where I carry it. I have the Tolster, just Amazon holster. It's not my favorite. Maybe I'll order a, a different one, but I like that they make this one set up for the shield wearing the TLR6. So it's just kind of an easy solution and it works fine. The only real issue with it is the belt um, clip is kind of small. 
So you can't fit it on like two inch rigger belts. It has to be like an inch and a half belt or less. But excellent little carry gun. Um, I want to talk about a couple things that have changed, a couple things that may change going forward. Um, a lot of you guys may notice that I got rid of my Leatherman Tread. Now, as much as I love Leatherman products and it's nice to have as a kind of a decorative thing and a conversation piece, the big issue I had for me is, you know, I do a lot of hands-on work um, and this thing gets a little uncomfortable in some of those situations. You know, it can get caught up on stuff and I feel like it act could actually be kind of dangerous to have on your wrist. You know, if you got caught on a machine, you may not be able to get out of there. And also, unfortunately, it's probably a little gross, but you can kind of see it's gotten kind of dirty and rusty. And I found myself having to clean it a lot. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm a person that sweats a decent amount. And this is actually leaving rust stains up my arm on hot days when I'm working outside. Just didn't get enough use out of it for the downsides. So that is no longer on my system. Couple things that I want to add that I, or changes I want to make. First of all, you guys know I talked about how I want to change my wallet out. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is adding some sort of a knife back to my keychain. Um, carried this guy in the past. I may just go back to that. I really like how light the keys are right now, but I kind of would like to have a knife, even though I've got my Leatherman and the other one. It's kind of redundant, so I don't necessarily need it. Um, I've tried carrying a squirt. It's just too heavy on the keys, and it's redundant because I carry a full-size Leatherman. So I may go back to carrying a Swiss Army knife. I'm considering getting one of the ones with the A-LOX panels. I'm just worried about them getting beat up in my pocket. You can see this one's gotten pretty beat up. So that's a change I'm considering making. The other thing is I talked about my Galaxy Watch, which I love a lot of the features of. You know, I love the notifications, finding my phone, controlling music, all that stuff. But honestly, I do miss my G-Shock. One of the main reasons I stopped using it is it's the band is starting to come apart. So I've considered they actually sell replacement uh, plastic or rubber for these guys, a band and a case. So I may end up doing that. I really liked having the Solar and Atomic because the battery life on this guy, I pretty much have to charge it every night, which is kind of a bummer. I love that this one's just set and forget. I don't like the... You can see it's really hard to read on the camera there. I don't love the reverse LCD on watches. So I may replace it with a different G-Shock, but as of right now, I don't like any of Casio's current op or offerings. They've gotten away from the Atomic and Tough Solar. So that's why I ended up going with a Galaxy Watch is because they didn't have anything better to replace it with. They didn't have anything even as good as this guy. Um, you know, if I'm going to carry a G-Shock, I want it to be Atomic and Solar. I don't want it to be, pretend to be a smartwatch or something like that. So that's something I keep my eye on. But for right now, I do like a lot of the features of the Galaxy Watch. The other thing I want to talk about with you guys is choice of EDC flashlight. You know, this is a really big flashlight, but I do like how simple the interface is. Something that's really big in the EDC community that I tried and just can't get on board with. Um is the D4 series. This is the V2, you know, great, super bright. There's just too much to it. You know, I know that the standard operations are pretty much just click on, hold up, click on, click off, you know, it double tap to turbo. But I was always worried about running my battery down. I was always worried about burning my pants. Um, also the sand color is gold, which is, you know, my fault. I should have realized that anodizing would probably turn out that way. Um, but I just can't stand, you know, counting eight clicks to change a setting. It's just not worth it to me. I love the magnetic tail cap. I wish that, you know, I could find a light that had the magnetic tail cap that I liked. You know, I'm considering going to something like an Olight S2R, Baton, something like that. But I do like the tactical tail clicky as well. So there's some trade-offs, but unfortunately I just can't stand the interface on these. Um, they're great if you want to show off and have a hot rod flashlight but as a light to carry every day and have to deal with just not not gonna work for me a couple things i thought i'd mention too um there are things that i would love to carry that i don't um you know one of those things is a handkerchief i think it's a great thing to have i have carried them for a while i haven't i you know i usually put them in my other back pocket where my wallet isn't 
you know, maybe if I got some nicer handkerchiefs, I might be more inclined to carry them. Um, but I just don't find myself sticking in my pocket. I don't know. Um, it's something I'd like to have, but it just doesn't find my way in my system. The other thing is some sort of a lighter. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Zippo. Uh, could be a Bic. Uh, could be an electric lighter. Um, I like would like to have a source of fire, but I'm not a smoker. I don't really deal with tobacco products, so I don't use it that much. So I don't find it going into my pocket. I had luck carrying a Zippo for a while, but the problem is they're always out of fuel when I went to use them. And I don't want to add a big case to it because that ruins the appeal of the Zippo. So I may try to start throwing in a Bic um, just to make sure I have one, you know, a source of fire. I used to carry a fire starter on my keys, um, which you guys have seen in my last videos. But the problem I had with it is it was a magnesium one with a ferro rod. I don't have it to show you where I would, but the ferro rod was glued in and it kept coming out. Um, I went through about three of them. I thought it was a fluke the first couple times, but no, the ferro rod just falls out of them. So source of fire is something I want to add. Um, and I want to try to start carrying a handkerchief, just haven't had that much luck. And I'm considering if I need a cutting tool on my keys or not. Uh, I would love you guys' comments if you have any suggestions for any of the things I brought up or things that I could change to make it better. Anyway, that's my on-body carry EDC system for winter early 2020. And look forward to part two and part three of my EDC systems hopefully coming out soon. All right, guys. Thank you.